Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Shah Weekly. And in this video, you are going to learn how to send events from Sif UI to UIKit and vice versa. And this particular video has been inspired from the amazing article written by Jordan Morgan. The link to the article will be right there in the YouTube description. And I highly recommend that you read this article because it actually covers a lot more, many different ways of sending events between a SIF UI view and a UI kit. So let's go ahead and get started. I've already created this UI kit application, which comes with a storyboard and everything. And what I want to do is I want to add a particular label that will be saying that UI clit label click number of times. So the first thing what I would do is I would create a label. So let's go ahead and create a label. There we go. Lazy property for the text label. We're creating a label. We're creating some sort of a text assigned to it. Uh, it can be blank, but we're just saying it zero times. Number of lines. We're going to be putting some constraints on it. And now we can go ahead and add the label. So view dot add sub view, and we can add text label. Once the text label has been added, we need to add some constraints on it so that it can get displayed in the middle of the screen or wherever we want to display. So I'm going to go ahead and add some constraints on it. Keeping in mind that this is our UI kit application and this is our view controller. Now let me go ahead and run the application so we'll be able to see the label getting displayed. And actually, let me go ahead and run it on iPhone 13 Pro Max. So that's the first thing we're doing. We are simply trying to display a very basic UI label in a UI kit application. So this is going to launch. You can even do this, all of this stuff using a storyboard, but I just coded it out. Okay. So here it is, we can see the label getting displayed. Perfect. Now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and add a Swift UI view also in the same view. For the Swift UI view, I'm gonna go ahead and create a brand new view and I will call it counter view. Okay, so we got a Swift UI view and this application is UI kit, but we still have the SIF UI view. Now in the SIF UI view, I want to create something which will consist of a text and a button. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this with a V stack. The text will say something. Let's say, first, let me go ahead and comment this out. There we go. SIF UI label clicked sometimes, like zero times, I guess. All right. We will also need to create a button. Button. Increment. There we go. Okay, so we have the button. And we can even change the button style to whatever you want, like a bordered prominent. Perfect. All right, so we created this counter view and now the question is how can we use this counter view in our view controller, right? So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. We know that we can use something called the UI hosting controller to host a Swift UI view. So let's add the Swift UI view, which is the counter view. I'm going to go ahead and say UI hosting controller and the root view in this case I'm going to pass in the counter view. This is going to return us a view controller. I'm just going to call it counter view controller. You can uh, call it anything you want. And next we're going to check that if the view is available or not. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that the view is there. And finally, we can go ahead and say add sub view, which is the counter view. Now, currently there are no constraints on the counter view, so it might not display correctly. So let's go ahead and add the constraints also. 
Okay, let's go ahead and run it. If we run it and we have done everything correctly, we should be able to see the counter view, which is actually a SIF UI view, displayed in our UI kit application. And we can, it's right there. Now, if I click on the increment button, nothing really happens. So this is a part where we have to think about that how can we make sure that when we increment, it not only increments in a counter view, but it also updates our view controller and our view, which is text label. So how can we do that? One of the ways to do that is to use something called the environment object. I'm gonna go ahead and create a separate file and I will call it app state. This is kind of like the global state of the application. Now inside the app state, I'm gonna go ahead and create app state, which is observable object. And we will go ahead and create a value property as published and assign it initial value to be zero. All right. Okay, so we've created this app state, which is going to serve as a global state, but if it's going to serve as a global state, we need to inject it into our environment object. So I'm gonna go back to my view controller and I'm gonna go ahead and create a property called app state, which will be of type app state. There we go. So we created this property called app state. And now since we have this particular property, we can go ahead and inject it right there as an environment object. So I can go ahead and app state, I can inject it. This means that the app state is going to be available to the content view and also all the views that are children of content view. So let's go back to the content or not the content view, sorry, the counter view. Yeah, the counter view. And now we can go back to the counter view and also access the environment object. We can simply do that by saying environment object private var app state, which will be app state. Now, whenever somebody clicks, we can simply increment the app state. So app state dot value plus equals to one. Instead of zero over here, we can change that and display the value of app state. So app state dot value. Let's go ahead and run this. Okay. And if I click it, I can see that it is definitely getting updated in our uh, SIF UI view, but it is not updated on our UI kit view. Now there are many different ways to update your UI kit view. You can use notification, you can use closures, callbacks, or you can use subscriptions. I'm gonna use subscriptions. So let's go back to our view controller. And right after adding it, I'm just gonna say app state dot and you can see that you can access the value by using the value property or you can uh, basically subscribe to this publisher. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say subscribe to this publisher. So whenever this particular publisher changes or it emits a new value, we're gonna get the value and now we can update our text label. There we go. This is going to return us something like a cancelable. So we need to make sure that we are preserving that. So let's go ahead and import combine. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a property for cancelable so that we can assign it. Okay, all right. Now let's go ahead and run it again. And now when I increment, you can see that even though this is incremented in the SIF UI view, we are able to change the UI kit view and update the UI kit. 
Now you might be wondering, okay, great, but what about if I have a button in a UI kit view and I want to update SIF UI? Well, the first thing is we need a button, right? So let's go ahead and create a lazy property that's going to give us the button. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say increment button, which will be of type UI button. And we will create a button inside over here. We can use our new syntax for creating a button. So let button equals to UI button, and we can pass in the configuration and the primary action. Configuration is simply, we're gonna say bordered prominent and the primary action over here will be of type UI action, weak self, because it can be, we don't really want this to hold any reference, in, and then we can say self dot app state dot value plus equals to one. The reason for the weak over here is obviously that we're using self and we don't really want it to, you know, hold a reference to that. Uh, border prominent is not really a property, it's actually kind of like this, so we will have to call it like that. And we also want to return this button, so let's go ahead and return it and set some sort of a title and as well as setting the translate auto resizing mass constraints to false. We have created this particular button but we haven't really added that, so let's go ahead and add it right after our text label, I'm gonna say increment button, and we will also add some increment button constraints so that it appears kind of like at the little bit below our text label. Let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so here we go. We got the increment button over here. Let's click this, and you can see that when we click it, we are simply updating our app global state which is changing the, not only the UI kit label, but also the SIF UI label. And I can work both ways. I can click on the SIF UI label, it updates the SIF UI label, as well as a UI kit, and UI kit label also update both of them. So this is how you can work with or send the events between the UI kit view and the SIF UI view. Once again, this is really good article and I will have a link to this article in my YouTube description that you should definitely check out and it does contain other ways of doing the same thing. So definitely check out this article. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching and really hope that you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then there are many different ways. Hopefully you will be able to find like a thanks button right there in the YouTube where the like button is right next to it. If you're not able to find it, that's okay too. But uh, mostly the YouTuber is going to add that later. But I just published my brand new book, Surviving the Coding Bootcamp. And in this book, I go about describing many different things. I mean, this is not really only about people who are, you know, uh, it, investigating into bootcamp, but you can look at that uh, there's a lot of topics that will apply to every single person. Resume, portfolio, group projects, hosting, LinkedIn profile, landing a job, how to negotiate salary negotiations. Hey, if who doesn't want to earn more, right? Raise and promotion, do and done, don't burn the bridges, and then success stories. So this is uh, my latest book. It's available on Amazon, and you can see that it's available as a paperback as well as a Kindle. I think it's like $9 or something for ebook. So definitely check that one out. And also if you are interested in my Udemy courses, I have a lot of different Udemy courses, MVVM design pattern, combine core data in iOS. I have a server driven UI, which is a brand new course, RX Swift. I mean, a lot of courses, anything you think of, I will probably have a course for iOS on Udemy. So definitely check out the YouTube description for the courses links. And thank you so much again, and hope you enjoy this video.